Hey guys, welcome back to the 1v1 podcast. I am your host, Vladis, and today I have with me uh, two very special guests. Uh, they are the host of the Golden Feather Tavern. It is Vertec and Chibri. What is going on? Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we are visiting uh, a show of somebody who is spectacular. Aww. <laughs> That's what's going on. Aww. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate you guys being here. I mean, again, I, I, I again, you guys have such an awesome show. I love the way you guys run it. And I think what y'all are doing in the community is just so vastly important to not only the feedback, but also the interaction of the community that has remained, I think, in a very uh, positive state lately. So I, I, I really appreciate that. And again, congratulations on the Guild Summit. That was the way y'all's format was, was awesome. Um, oh, thank you. And I, again, we talked about all that stuff in the pre-show. I'm just saying it for the video, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, go, you know go and watch the full episode. But <laughs> um, out there, that's all. <laughs> so, guys, what was this live stream today? Holy crap! This was such oh. a great live stream. Like I, people were saying, people were saying this is like one of the best ones of the year. I mean, that's not a light statement to say on something that people were severely underestimating. So, uh, Vertec, I'm gonna lead it off with you. What are your th what were your thoughts on this overall stream? So, for a while, when the, when there was uh, talk about it being about server meshing, and people were saying, "Hey, are you is, are you gonna be sleeping on this one, or do you think this one's gonna be a hype?" and my answer was always, "Eh, it's gonna be whatever." <laughs> I mean, server meshing has been around since like I remember. I remember someone telling me about a glitch I should do to train my skills in Ultima Online, and like. 1732 or whenever the game came out like you're not that um, old vertex come like on forever now. ago <laughs> um so i mean i remember e existing in that game and there being server meshing to a rudimentary degree mm -hmm. and it so to me like hearing a game say yeah we're doing server meshing to me it was like eh, it's uh probably take it or leave it but i gotta say after watching how they've customized everything and all the work they put into making it more performant and the way it's going to function that okay it's a win oh it's, yeah it's a big win for sure absolutely and then you know them them coming out and confirming to everybody like still on schedule no no delay we're not seeing any delay here talking about how successful their last milestone um mm -hmm. sprint was and milestone 10 uh, starts today yeah all of today. all of that together was just like yeah this was this was a good day this was a good stream this was good. Well, and we got kind of like two announcements. Alpha one mm -hmm. spot testing. It's mm -hmm. going to be rolling out yeah. soon. So um, F all of you guys that are going to be in that because I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was. I just didn't get alpha one access. I, I was. You'd, I, you I, never know. Well, I mean, you know, may, maybe if the gods, you know, deem mm -hmm. me worthy. But honestly, it, I really do feel like if Margaret was like, hey, Vladis, would you like to be a part of an NDA alpha? I can't keep my mouth shut. Like as far I, I I couldn't I am I would be so I would be preaching to my like guys you don't know what the hell y'all are missing this is too good you have no idea how amazing like I would be I couldn't do it I would yeah. I would have to go off the grid completely can you imagine I, how torturous it would be yeah if if so let's let's say at the end of at the end of July they do another live stream and they're like all right guys so. Alpha two starts at the end of September, the very last day of the very last day of the quarter, right? But Vladis, do you want to start like next week? <laughs> so you'd have like a month and a half to two months worth of guys. I won't have any streams for two months. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you in September. <laughs> I'll have to say a tweet. I'll be like, guys, I'm taking a, a month and a half break. I won't be back till September 30th. It means absolutely nothing. I wish you guys the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just taking some time with the family. Oh my god. Um see ya. See ya. It's Look. it's really a protection mechanic for yourself at that point. Oh, a hundred percent. Ironically, you know, when Alpha 2 starts is when I'll see you next. <laughs> I mean, look. I would I would very much be like, oh my God, I'd be so tempted. But at the same time, like I think there's something special to go in completely fresh, right? You're gonna have all of the content creators that were in Alpha One that when the launch happens, 
it's almost like they're going to be like, guys, oh, look, check this out and check this cool thing out and check that cool thing out. Right. So it's like you, you, you kind of like have a guide already to like what's going on. But I think to get the perspective from someone who's like, it's all new. Like I've never been here. I've never pushed any of these buttons. That's going to be, I think something special. And I want to try to preserve that like as yeah. much as possible. And so, um, yes, will co other content creators have an edge over me as far as like content goes yeah probably but ultimately it, it doesn't matter to me because we are going to we're all going to be playing this game eventually and it's like yeah. i was preaching in my stream today september <laughs> because there's still people holding out for july or even august and i'm like guys look and i said if they're going to announce anything they're probably going to announce maybe the month now they didn't do yeah. that and because yeah. they had that um i forgot his name but the he's one of the executive producers um right. Brian, uh, I was thinking, man, what is he here for? Because he didn't really talk at all. And then, of course, we get to the studio update, and then he starts talking. I'm like, yep. ah, yeah. so and it's all unloaded. Mm -hmm. And then, so we, and then even Margaret mentioned the CC program and, and says, hey, we're we're gonna be hiring someone for that particular department, and so yeah. that's gonna be coming out relatively soon. So, and the fact that they've literally hired more in this first and second quarter than they did all of last year. Yeah. That's I don't know if people caught high. that. That is insane. <laughs> like, yeah. I, again, people, I, I, it's hard right now. The job market is super hard, especially right yeah. now in game development. And the fact that Intrepid is growing at that kind of a rate. And again, if they, they're always uh, promoting their, uh, their retention acquisition or like that 3% number, or was it 2% or something like that? Like the fact that all of the people that they've had since like 2021, like no one's quitting, like no one's leaving, everyone is staying. And that goes to show you the kind of culture they're they're cultivating, the kind of uh, passion they have there. And honestly, too, if you have a, a game developer, like one of my friends was like, dude, I'm probably going to try to apply to Intrepid because at first he didn't want to apply for it because he was like, well, I have a pretty stable because he actually works for um, uh, the online casino gaming stuff. Like he, he works okay. for that kind of a gaming company. And it's stable money, like he doesn't have to worry about like the game folding or doing it because of course casinos, <laughs> they're not going to go out of business. Yeah, so, yeah. but he was just worried. He's like, dude, like, I don't want to like get really invested into a company that may fail. And, you know, because again, you know, he was telling me about Wildstar and there was a lot of people that saw Wildstar and thought, man, this game is going to be so epic. It's going to be so good. And then four years down the road, they shut down. You know, so yeah. it's a very realistic thing for people. This is people's livelihood. You know what I mean? Like people have families, they have people to take care of and to gamble it all on an indie company that hasn't even produced a game yet. Like that's again, Sounds and the game, yeah, it is super scary. Yeah. And it, and, the, and that game is an MMORPG, which doesn't have a really good track record right now. You know what I'm saying? So okay. it's, it's super scary. Um, dank RNG. Oh my God with the raid thank you hey, so welcome much on in, Raiders. welcome we're just doing a 1v 1v2 technically with the golden feather tavern <laughs> and we're talking about this is a creation intrepid studios the server machine live stream that happened today we're talking about all the stuff mm. uh but th thank you so much dank i really appreciate that um but yeah it's it's you know and so he was telling me he's like you know and he lives in california i don't know if he lives near san diego or where intrepid currently is but um like he says, I, I actually might apply. And he's like, because again, like he's hearing such good things about the company's culture comparatively to being the drone culture that he's currently at. Like there's nobody passionate that works at a casino gaming company. And the people yeah. that are passionate, they're doing their own kind of small projects. You know what I'm saying? So that that's, you know, kind of where it's at at that point. But yeah. um, do you guys have anything to say about that? I'm sorry. Um, no, no, I, I will say I went to I went to apply to a couple of jobs that I saw with gaming companies before. And then I realized it was that kind of gaming and said, yeah, never mind. <laughs> never mind. And that's what I mean. Like, all, all I was trying to say was that I think it's just really impressive that Intrepid is doing this kind of a hiring and be able to maintain these people. Because, again, it's really attractive for someone that actually enjoys game dev but the company culture of their company is killing their passion. And yeah. I think that's just horrible, you know, because it's not like game devs grow on trees, you know, in right. that sense. And so right. like whenever you feel like the, the passion is just sucked out of you, it, it's it's not good, you know what I mean? So, yeah. but moving, moving on to 
other stuff. I want to talk about the uh, potential that this particular server mission technology has for the grand scale of Ashes of Creation. We literally have people that are like, you know, we think of like 250 versus 250. And before we think it was a pipe dream. Now yeah. with this technology, I mean, what do you guys think about that? I mean, do you guys think we keep potentially even reach 500 versus 500 comfortably? Whew. Um, my only my only reservation on that is going to end up being how much it will actually cost financially to do something like that on a regular basis. Like, mm -hmm. and that's me literally not knowing. Right. Like how much how much how much it would actually cost to keep spinning up servers kind of on demand, even if it's only for, uh, you know, a, a couple hours or who knows how long some of these siege type things are going to last. It could be in a day or two. Right. If no, if there's no clear winner because people keep fighting back and forth, like neck and neck, who knows how long there might be a timeout on it to to cut it down, but to spin up a server that's going to be that powerful for you know just little bits and pieces here. Do do you think or Chibi? Do you do you have anything to say about that one? Um, not really sure what to add to that. I'm not really a server side. I'm like. I do web dev work, so I understand coding stuff. I can understand milestones and things like that. But server tech, I, I am at a loss. I don't even know where to begin on that stuff. Okay. Um, but it does give me hope. That's yeah. what I can say. I, I think ultimately that's the thing that I was noticing in the community is the fact that these 250 versus 250 or even potentially 500 versus 500 doesn't seem like a pipe dream, right? It actually yeah. seems like with this kind of technology in place, that it actually seems like a realistic possibility. And especially if they if they finally finish or get into the dynamic server meshing part, that's gonna get very exciting because I feel like in certain parts of my mind, I was thinking like how are streamers and how are like these guilds that are super massive gonna be just going through the world and it just be working? You know what I mean? Like in a game like Ashes or uh, World of Warcraft, like I've seen Asmongold bring like a, like hundreds of peoples or like it's just a whole bunch of people and you just see them going and it's just like rubber banding and it's like you see people like glitching back and forth and stuff like that because again the servers yeah. can't handle all of these people all riding together through you know the count uh you know certain areas and stuff like that so I I really feel like um with the help of Alpha One people do you think this is another question that my chat brought up earlier do you think potentially having 5,000 people or like 2,000 people uh, and like NDA testing is enough to actually break servers? Do you think it's enough to really see what these servers can withstand? Um, I think yes, because we've already with the limited number of PI we've had, um, we've already had server issues during the node testing initially mm -hmm. where they had to like bring it down, do something and then bring it back up. Um, and my answer is, you know, I think the most important thing to consider when going into this alpha two is way larger than alpha one even was. And, um, and <laughs> like the sheer numbers that we're going to see being able to access alpha two comparatively to alpha one is just going to be a big difference. I, I can't tell you exactly like how many, because it, it depends on how many are still watching after getting access to alpha two. I mean, I know that a lot of packs uh, were bought by January, but concurrently, I'm not sure where are those people from? What time of day do they play? Um, are they even able to test as much as they would like look for consistently? Maybe the, there's a higher population on the weekends than there is during the week, things like that. Right. Um, because, I mean, on, honestly, a lot of us in the MMO community, we've gotten older, so we have jobs now. We're not just sitting at home playing World of Warcraft without, like, schoolwork to do or something like that. Um, so it's just one of those, like, interesting things where I think as we add more and more people, we will definitely see um, a pretty good idea of what a typical a server could handle, I think. Yeah, that Over that, and uh, on top of that, they just said that they're going to be working with uh, everything all meshed, right? There's going to be 
little square. Let's just assume everything is going to be exactly as they showed it on the screen, right? There's going to be square areas blocked off for one server to manage, right? Mm -hmm. They could totally make that as small or large as they want to for testing, yeah. right? right? So 2,000 people, they could literally cram all of them onto one server, one little area and see how strong it is, see how, see how well it'll last. And then just, you know, we'll add a second one right next to it. And that's your out of bounds right there. You're not allowed to go out outside those bounds. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if they have to be perfect squares, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, and again, the reason why I say that is because, like, I, I kind of hope that they can kind of shape uh, certain parts off, uh, so that way they can try to save as much of the space as possible in that way. But I mean, I don't, I, and I don't know how Unreal Engine works. I don't know if it doesn't, if it doesn't work that way. If they have to square it off, if that makes it easier or harder, I don't personally know. But I guess, like for me, as far as real estate goes, like I just want the, the what they were showing. Again, when I was watching the Star Citizen demonstration of the ser their server meshing, I thought that was very impressive, and the mm -hmm. fact that they were able to literally showcase gameplay during this PowerPoint presentation of like, you know. Um, the just seamlessly going back and forth on the server and stuff like that and it just working very seamlessly like i i don't know i i think about it on a grand scale and i'm like oh my god the level of possibilities this has now like i get so freaking excited about that because i really thought they were i thought they were going to because you know steven says stuff that's like super ambitious You're like ah and you know even margaret sometimes has to rein him in because he gets so excited sometimes and i thought that eight to ten concurrent player base per server you know, I was thinking, man, I'm, I don't know. They might have to drop that down. You know what I mean? Because it's mm -hmm. like, we've never really gotten the kinds of players, um, that can usually like servers that have like really large player counts, they have, they're handicapped, uh, by like sharding and instancing and all this other stuff. Right. And so I was thinking, how is a true open world sand park going to deliver eight to 10,000 players, like in a very seamless way. And the fact that what I thought the biggest like uh mic mic drop moment was was when they started mentioning the single thread and then the multi thread. Mm. Like because they're like, yeah, with Unreal Engine, you know, it's it's basically like hard coded as like, you know, single threaded. You know, it's, it, Unreal Engine is single threaded. And we did research and we thought there's like it's basically impossible to make it multi-threaded so we just did it anyway <laughs> like it was just it was yeah. such a like a giga chad moment i'm like wait what so wait so we so, just changed it yeah we just changed it you know we just <laughs> yeah. our team of eight people we just changed it you know like i don't know like what did y'all think of first of all like the whole intrepid net that that whole infrastructure they're creating um like what did you think about that and then i'll ask like <clears throat> Do you think that that should be a service that Intrepid should like potentially give to other companies? Hmm. Man, oh man. Um, this may be the uh, the greedy one in me talking, but I think they should hold on to it for a little while as their their sole thing. I agree. You know, kind of get the I benefit agree. out of it, um, get people experiencing it and whatnot, and then yeah, you know, maybe maybe for mm -hmm. the the betterment of. I mean, Stephen himself has said, you know, competition breeds excellence, right? Absolutely. He's put it out there and said, hey, uh, you know, you should never really wish ill. I mean, I don't know if these were exa his exact words, but the kind of feeling I got from from his statements are like, you, you should never really wish ill of your competitors. Right. Because yeah. if they're pushing out something good, then you want to push out something better. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's sell to Microsoft. But yeah, if they were to like sell off that oh, service God. to help bring somebody else in like that, even if they keep it like proprietary, you know, sign an NDA or whatever, and you're not allowed to to use this yourself if it needs to be maintained contact us we'll maintain it yeah something along those lines yeah what do you think Chibri? do you think do you do you like this whole intrepid net that they've cultivated and created from scratch and well i think from a developer standpoint i for one i love it it's really amazing to see them not only iterate upon unreal engine 5 um in a way that benefits them in a in a much more helpful manner um, but also in a way that seems to have not been worked on or developed before and so i believe that intrepid in this instance or in this manner is really changing the scope of how mmorpgs could be done and i think that i, I agree with vertech i mean a lot of people were thinking you know for 
a game that's only going to be, you know, sub cost. There's no box cost and things like that. Um, I'm not worried if they if they really nail this and this works as flawlessly as they're hoping to get it. That yeah, Intrepidnet could absolutely be something that they could, um, you know, market out to other people, and it would fund Steven's game for almost life at that point because other people are able to utilize that structure in a way that um, just not only it helps to, I guess, change the landscape of future gaming, but right. also help to like. I guess in this case, you can kind of tell Steven's definitely like a businessman, right? He's He's got a, a good head on his shoulders for these kind of things. And capitalizing on that can definitely help not only reap back some of the reward and the benefits that he's spent all of this time and his own money into developing Ashes, but also the, the vision that he has. And just going back to earlier, you can tell that all of the devs working on this are just so proud to be working on this. And they're so proud to have gotten this far and yeah i i think i think it's something that i could definitely see being utilized in the future yeah i i think anton was the developer that was saying man when i got started four years ago i was like i can't wait to implement this technology because <laughs> i mean he was talking about this and, and what's even crazier i know wagsy said it in chat right now the fact that they've this like i thought when they announced server meshing i thought this was like a future thing mm -hmm. like i had no idea this was already implemented and has been implemented in the game since Alpha 1. Yeah. Like, that's wild to me. And I yeah. that's what really caught me off guard is that, okay, this isn't an announcement. This is what we've been doing. This is what we're doing, yeah. <laughs> yes, and what, we, and what we're going to do with the Dynamic Server Machine. And it's like, oh, my God, dude. And I know people always said it like how far is intrepid as far as development right are they are they holding things close to the chest are they not releasing so well clearly they are because i mean that to me is a pretty big announcement or something pretty big to say that they just hadn't said in what three years this is what yeah. three years since literally the alpha one and they just withheld that information this whole time right yeah and that's that's something um i kind of missed because i i had to work today and i only had like a, a little bit of time to take off to be able to watch the video i haven't watched the whole entire thing oh, so they said dude. it was actually in place in in alpha one even mm -hmm. the static server mission mm -hmm. yep oh that was it was static at that time okay. yeah okay yeah gotcha, they, gotcha. They, yeah. well server mission in general was that was the the fundamental thing that they were working off of in alpha one now so like the whole dynamic part i'm sure they've been slowly like trying to get that going but apparently they said that the dynamic stuff will be available and like not available but basically it'll be there at the start of alpha 2. yeah and so and that we apparently had already experienced it ourselves in the node okay. cast. really yeah, okay that, even better that's what they said yeah yeah, yeah that said, part that part i caught i just i didn't catch like yeah. that it was it was in place back in alpha one but then you said like dynamic the the static server meshing and, and such that's well, okay i thought there was another part that I don't know if you caught it, but they were talking about the Unreal Engine uh, servers and how Intrepid it iterated on that. Right. And so I think that might have been another big UE5 change. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, you're talking about the replication part of it, how they the UE5 works off their servers off a of replication and they said, well, we can't do that. We had to basically work everything off of each server. Yeah. Yeah. The The... Again, like I'm not a server person either, Cheaper. Like I, I, I don't know all this <laughs> I'm stuff. I'm like, I'm trying to it's figure all, this out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's. I think we're all trying to figure it out. But I mean, to me, I don't care what voodoo magic they need to to do. Just do the voodoo they do, and I hope they do it well. Because clearly, you know, you guys, Phantom, uh, or I should say, uh, Phantom Mix, uh, his. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I swear to you, Steven is like, bro, he's been in the community for seven years. You have to get his name correct. Come on now. But <laughs> um, yeah, like I think it's very cool at the stuff that they're doing. And I, I just feel like, man, I, I'm getting really freaking hyped for this game. And this is the thing of when you actually hire people that actually care about the gaming industry and also care deeply about MMORPGs. Because mm -hmm. again, you know, people are literally relying right now off of 15 20 year old mmos people are yeah. still playing world of warcraft eso you know what guild wars 2 and they don't like it i was talking to one of my buddies that's that uh picked up star wars galaxies on restoration because he was like dude i refuse to play guild wars 2 
He's like, dude, I played it for so long. I'm so tired of it. I want something new. So he went to something super old instead because there's just nothing new. He's like, what am I going to do? Play New World? Lost Ark? He's like, Lost Ark's pay to win garbage and New World is dying. Like no one's played New World. So it's like there's just nothing out there. And and again, that's yeah. why always people, you have these YouTubers that come out saying, Ash is a creation. It's a last chance of MMOs and stuff like that. And me personally, like, look, I love Ashes. I don't agree with that. I don't think Ashes of Creation is our last chance for a good MMO. I think eventually we will get more MMOs and hopefully some of them are actually good. Um, I just think that the one thing that I really want to get right is the balance of the PVE and PVP. And me and Vertec, we've Mm -hmm. talked, we talked about that immensely (laughs) on the Golden Feather Tavern because I think we're both very passionate about having a pretty healthy balance of those two things. Um, but ultimately, like this, this whole thing of like the character creator hopefully being uh, released at the uh, hopefully uh, in August, because I'm thinking, OK, we're if it's going to come out in September, right? Like we got to get character creator pretty quickly. Right. So that's probably going to be in August. And so and then I also want to know, too, like what races are probably going to be available at the start of Alpha 2 as well. I'm hoping all of them are going to be available except the Tolnar. Mm. But I don't know if all the genders are going to be available at the start of Alpha 2 right i can't recall what all they've shown us because i think they haven't shown us any junior dwarfs like in game yet like the new mm-hmm. redone models they haven't done them okay in, in yeah. game um i think they've shown us empyrean um and they've shown us i don't know if we've seen um uh the Veiloon, um and then the uh alien of course we've seen like the human race um yeah. And then, of yeah, course, we they showed us maybe not in game, but like one of the turntables with the Veiloon, didn't they? One yes. Of the streams that, yes. Yeah, it's done the turntables. So we could at least see a model. But yeah, and we've yeah. seen models of the junior dwarfs. But just mentioning in game, I think we've only seen like some of the human stuff. We've seen the Renkai orc. We've seen the Vec. We've seen the Pyre, mm-hmm. uh, Empyrean and the humans. And that's like about it so we haven't seen the nakua we also haven't seen the junior dwarfs i hope i don't know what's going on with them i hope there's nothing like wrong in that department because the turntables that we got and this was like old like wasn't this like 2022 2023 when they showed us like the redone junior dwarves they look great i just want to yeah. see them in game like we just haven't seen them yeah 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 but um Ooh. i guess going on to uh the next thing that i want to talk about is Alpha 2 expectations for you guys. Like, what are you guys expecting? Uh, and I don't know this. Again, this is so... Why you guys are PI? Why can't you not be PI? Oh. But... <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess, what are your expectations without ruining anything, but just, like, just talking in general uh, of, like, what are your expectations for Alpha 2? Like, what what do you want to be able to experience when Alpha 2 goes live? You want to take this like, first? initially or overall? Like initially, like like the first day of Alpha Two, like what do you okay. like? What are you wanting on doing? What are you wanting to like play with? Go into test, like all that stuff. Um, for me, I'm just dying to get my hands on cleric and playing around with the skill tree. <laughs> That's all I really want to do. <laughs> Dang it, Shivri, come on now, come on now. <laughs> um, but that's also because <clears throat> again, I I don't want to have too high of expectations for the beginning. Mm -hmm. um especially not knowing you know what all is going to be available i know they mentioned you know uh during the ama that you were on um the the scientific node yeah so right like i just over over the years during different testing of games that i've done for either like playstation or other i've just worked to not have any expectations and just go in with like an open mind, no expectations, and just try testing it from a first person entering into a game perspective. Okay. Now, what about you, Vertec? Um, some of the main things that I personally am going to be testing, uh, uh, wanting to test like right away is going to be kind of like Chibi. I'm going to want to test the the tanking arch- archetype. <clears throat> I'm going to be you testing Vanguard, the tanking right? archetype. <laughs> um the vanguard um <laughs> and all the different little iterations and skill combinations but i, I want to do so through uh every different way that you can level i just want to see uh how you can level through questing how you can level through just grinding mobs how you can level through pvp 
and just see how they all compare. Like, and during that time, um, Chibi and I are both kind of committed to um, while we're streaming on streaming that content on the on the Golden Feather, we're going to be asking, you know, our viewers, like, what do you want to see tested? Right. Like, what do you want to see tested? You're you're here to yeah. visit and see what's going on, and you're curious, probably because you can't play yourself. So what do you want to see tested? Yeah. Right. I think for me, like personally, like I've always been really excited for the caravan system. I, I really want to see what the caravan system is going to bring. I want to see like the good and the bad, the ugly. I want to see realistically, is the caravan system going to be as fun as I think, or is it going to be boring as hell? Right. right. Because it's like, you think of transporting a very, and again, I think that's going to be my main feedback is I think the base caravan is way too slow. It's way too slow. I think it needs, dude. Did you see poor uh, who's because Steven had the third, the tier three components in his caravan, but yeah. then I think oh, I forgot Bucky. which developer. Yes, it was Bucky. He was on a basic mm -hmm. caravan and he was back there. I'm like, yeah. dude, come on. Like, I think yeah. there has to be a little bit more like pick up and go. And again, I think I there know. should, be, you I think it know. should be that slow at, at starting? I think so. Because if you think really? about it, uh, like only because of what somebody said in chat, like Lloyd says people could run, run alongside it. If you think about it, I don't know when we're supposed to get our first mount. But if we work together to get a caravan and if we're like, I don't want to level in this node anymore, let's put our stuff together in a caravan and take it off to Miraleth because Winstead's getting overrun with like population. Mm -hmm. I think that should be something that you can do with uh, people who mm -hmm. don't have mounts because otherwise like you're you have a bunch of people that are willing to defend a caravan, but the caravan's way up there and you're just stuck running. <laughs> like, right. That's Plus also that... oh, like to, to further Chibi's point, um, there's going to be upgrades, right? Mm -hmm. If there's going to be an upgrade system, that means you have to start at the lowest end and build up or the highest end and build down. Now, how fast should a caravan with a couple of horses really be able to go? Right. Yeah up to a certain a certain speed without breaking any kind of immersion whatsoever because it's flying at 55 miles an hour when a horse can only run like 30. Mm. Um, right. So then you have to scale down from there. Like what? how far down should you go with your downgrades? What would make sense? What feels like it makes sense? And there's only going to be a certain window of space to give you two or three upgrades within that time, right? Right. So. Yeah. But I, think... I do think it should be tested. You know, we should right. see how well that actually does feel to your point, Lattice. Yeah, I, I just I, I'm just excited to test like so many things. I think the aug augment system, the talent system, the weapon system, like I want I am such a customization junkie. I, I want to make sure that their philosophy at a core, like their foundation for these talent trees is in a good spot, because frankly, I am not on board currently with their talent structure. I, I, I think their talent structure needs work. I think the selection of no choice needs to be better. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the stuff looks very fillerish, and I think we need to condense the filler and add more meaningful choice. And mm -hmm. I, by doing that, because it looks like with wet, like a weapon talent tree, as an example, it looks like there's 50 levels with that. And that makes sense because the player character has 50 levels, but mm -hmm. I would rather have uh, cut it in half and there's 25 levels in the weapon choice so it still scales the same way as far as XP goes, right? Like going mm -hmm. from one to 50 is the same as going from one to 25, but you don't have to work a huge talent tree, you know, having 50 points to spend, you can make a more condensed tree, but the tree actually has harder choices because you don't have to add all these other nodes that are pretty meaningless or just like, you know, filler or whatever. You can actually add very meaningful choice progression nodes uh, by having less uh, less choice. Now I don't want I don't want something super basic like New World, but I want something sort of like uh, in my head like Last Epoch. If you've played Last Epoch, which is an, an action RPG, their uh, skill trees for their skills is, in my opinion, a perfect representation of what I want for the weapon skill tree. Mm -hmm. Like it just the way it webs off and how each choice. Like you look at the tree and you look at all the options. Like damn, I want everything. Like everything looks good, but you can only select 20 points. And there's like sometimes like 30 or not 30, but like maybe 45 to 50 nodes um, on there. And it's like, but you can't select everything. Like you have 20 points and that's it. And right. when all the choices are very enticing, I think that's what makes 
really compelling gameplay, but also I don't want there to be just one way to do a weapon either. Right. And that's what I think is so really like captivating about the last epoch talent trees is the fact that, oh, I already tried this con like configuration. Let me try this different configuration. Right. Like that's how the weapon should be. I don't want there to be where, oh, if you're going to do a great sword, this is the best, like these are the best talent points to pick. Right. Like, yeah. I, and again, I mean, there might be something to that, you know, as far as it goes, but I, I really want there to be true meaningful choice there. Right. And so, yeah. Ver Vertec, like, yeah. how do you personally feel? Uh, can you talk about the weapon talent trees? I mean, is that technically a part of the? Uh, yeah, the we, we had we we saw some things on the streams uh, that they the, their live streams that they've shown. Yeah, right. And like the the revelations there, and just honestly looking at what they've shown, and by personal desires, I can say, well, for one, just to touch on your uh, your point about the player skill trees, right? Um, I right. think I mentioned this uh, the other day when you were streaming and I was just in your chat, but the, the skill trees, I'm, I can't recall if they showed it off on uh, the stream or the character or a class rather, or archetype words, words, the archetype uh, reveals. Um, but the skill trees for the archetype, it's really just that big shape that you see, but you can right. start at multiple different points and then spread out from there at any one or multiple spots. But I mean, obviously, if you, you can only start at one point at a time, right? You, know, you level up, you get one point, you can start here. That's all the, that's the only skill I wanted up here right now. So then I can spend my next point down here. I can spend my next point over here. And now I want these two to meet in the middle because I really want this thing that branches up from both of them. And all I have right. to get them both over to here before I can go up. And it kind of lets you spread out and around because there's somewhat of a theme that they could build around each starting point, right? And then things could combine in the middle for a different skill. Um, and that's that's kind of how it was set up in the the Node Wars. And it felt, to me, it felt good. Now, the presentation of it, maybe that could be better because, it's, I mean, obviously, in, in your case at least, it didn't present itself very attractively. But I liked no, how it to felt me. to build it out. Okay. Because it was there was there was a good feeling of hey I want to get to this skill but I have to choose that first I'm not sure if I like that so much but the one next to it is good and the one to the other side of it is good so that's just where I got to start at but every skill tree ever is going to have a choice somewhere that you don't really like but you have to go through to get to what you do want so right. it didn't really affect me negatively much there but uh, as far as the the weapon skill trees. I suppose if there's 50 points or 25 points available, the difference could be that the 50 points lets you customize it a lot more. So let's say if you are trying to build your character around and you see that you have like X amount of crit and X amount of whatever, and you're like, I just want to get like a little bit more crit to get up to this one percentage rate, because then I have a skill that doubles it, which is going to make me hit hundred percent. So why should I bother going any, any higher than like 50, right? I mean, random example, but just saying. Um, yeah. So you choose one point instead of, if it were only 25, you would have two points of crit instead of one. And you're kind of wasting one. Um, I guess in my head, I just, I, I, when you say more customization, I, I, in my head, it almost, tra it almost translates to more meaningless uh, more customization. Granular control, I guess I should say. That's, a, like that's having, right. Having 10 points of volume versus a hundred on your TV. Right. Exactly. And, and, and I, it's all about what you create as an illusion for the gamer, right? For the person that, because yeah. you can, you can do it as a developer in multiple ways to where it looks like you have a lot of choice, uh, but really realistically you don't. And sometimes it looks like you don't have a lot of choice, but in reality you have tons of choice, right? And so like for me, I think I don't really have tons of choice going in there, but as to you said, you do. Like there's a lot of different class ways you can go to that, to manipulate to your side of the gameplay of what you like. And I don't know how to feel about the uh, having multiple starting points. I I don't know. I, in most games that I play, you usually have like, um, like one, like everyone starts here and then you kind of branch out like elsewhere. I know in last epoch, whenever you select your first point, uh, because every, every point is like a spider web. I don't know, because I keep mentioning last epoch. I don't know if you guys even played it. I, but it, I have no idea. Right. Okay. So <laughs> so all of the things start off in the middle. Like it's in the middle of the web, 
is your base ability that you're customizing. And then yeah. you have like branches that it goes off into, right? And so you have multiple pathways uh, when you get your first point to go into. Like sometimes there's three pathways or even four pathways. So you can put your four, first point into any of those pathways. And I just like the way it's presented because then you can splinter off into this path to go and hit this capstone mm -hmm. uh, talent towards the right. And it's mm -hmm. like, it causes like a burning or you can go to the left and cause it like to be a frozen or you can go to the left and it's like a poison or you can go down to the bottom right and it's like something else. And there's also a mixture of regular node allocation and like capstone node alloc uh, allocation, right? So mm -hmm. if you've ever played Path of Exile, there's like the regular nodes that just do the incremental percentage increases, but then there's more meaningful nodes that actually add more like direct changes to the ability or to the to the passive or whatever it is. And I just don't see that yet. I see everything just being very granular and oh, it just does more percentage damage. And I just don't so, think that's fun. I ahead, had Jimmy. an idea that I think meshes not only the ability to um, increment how much damage you're doing with a weapon, but also give you choice over your like what the weapon can do like we've right. seen on the weapon skill tree but also give you meaning for all of your skill points so right. one thing that i've heard you say time and again is you're worried that if um you have 50 skill points and there's 50 points to allocate in the tree that you won't have meaningful choices you'll just be able to get everything so what i think could be cool and this could be a complete L take. I'm willing to like just put that out there. But I think it could be cool. Instead of putting points into 1% more damage, 1% more damage, 1% more damage, 1% more damage, that's eh. Um, let me gain that over time. Because what do you do when you're learning a new skill? When you first pick up a bow and arrow, or if you go to the axe throwing place, you're not going to be amazing at throwing the axe the first day and the first time you've ever done it. But as you practice more, as you do it more, as you learn more, you begin getting better at it. And then to the point where I'm pretty sure the people working there that do it all the time could do some trick shots with it. So that if I'm thinking about that, as you're using a mace more, as you're using a wand more, as you're using your bow and arrow more, um, you're gaining that experience through using it and it increases it as you gain levels, if you will, through the the different weapons rather than getting a certain like plus one percent crit or whatever then instead we see things like the wand skill tree where you can opt into more burst opt into more beam opt into more cold opt into more fire etc um and that becomes more of a, a a consideration because you are picking like your primary and secondary archetype skill augments. I'm assuming there's probably going to be some secondaries to choose from with the secondary archetype. And then you also have your weapon skill tree um, to choose from as well. And I think that could be a way to pull all of the points that you get as you're leveling for a more choice and more strategic manner. Like, do I go for that extra damage on the, the lava fireball thing or do i do more wand damage when i'm using it things like right. that i think that could be a mesh of both options in a way that's more meaningful because at least at least i'm not just sitting there clicking for just a minor upgrade to my my weapon right that just that doesn't feel exciting to me and it doesn't feel meaningful to me yeah and 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 i think the way you're talking about it you just want it to be because you are doing that technically, like as you're using your weapon, you're gaining experience with your weapon. And mm -hmm. then once your weapon hits the next level, you have a point. But it, mm -hmm. but you're basically saying, I don't want to put points in just to go from one percent to two percent, from two percent to three percent. Just give you, me the percentage by leveling, like by yeah. using the weapon. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you can call that uh, like a leveling node. So you select the node. It's it's now like allocated. And that node has its own separate bar that levels like as you're continuing to use the weapon. That's what you're mm -hmm. saying, right? Yeah. I mean, I can I can see that being something. I mean, and and honestly, like um, I personally don't care like what Intrepid does or how they pull it off. It's just when I look at these talent trees, especially especially right now, the ability talent tree, 
I think the ability talent tree is severely o- uh, underwhelming to me. Well, um, let me um, just to give you some background there, at least from like the Node Wars. Maybe maybe the the skill tree you're looking at was the fighter one. And I'll be honest, I've never really been much of a fighter person, so I didn't really pay super close attention to all the everything they hovered over with that one. Right. But I can say the the tank one was very well done. There wasn't okay. just a select this to get 1% extra defense. There was not a single note on there that I remember doing that. Not a one. Okay. Um, it was all an actual skill. And some of them was some of them were along the lines of uh like choosing this option when you hover over it. You had two options. One of them would do say 250% damage to one person and give them like shaken, or I forget what the, the debuff was, but it was something that would start them down the path of you know, being interacted with with a different one and then would not, you know, uh, uh, combo into something else. Right. But then the other option was attacks all enemies in front of you within a cone and it does 150% damage and also right. applies that shaken status to them. So it was very much like a, do you want single target for this? Or do you want more of an AOE cone? Right. But do you think only... An... Or go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, and then there was another... There was It was kind of like three in a row that just kind of built to either single target or multi-target and each one you can make a different choice okay but do you think and that was for one ability correct those are three different abilities well okay. each one ability you could choose single target or multi-target. right right so for one ability right you had two options to customize yeah and that's my problem i think there should be more like i, I think there should I, be more more Okay. Because because I, I just don't think to me it's very similar to like the tripod system in Lost Ark. I, I, I don't really care for like three options as a as a you know like a talent tree. Like I think it's very basic. I, I think it's mm-hmm. very similar to like New World to me, which I look at those talent trees and I'm like, this is very so, underwhelming. So then let me ask you, the the skill tree that you said works amazing. This whole web that you were talking about, every single node of the web you have five choices on. Um, you have every... over one node of this web, and you have five choices on that one piece of web. Right. But you select one right there, and then you move on to the next node, and you have five choices there. No, no, no. Five it's, choices it's, on another node. It's and then five choices on another node. It's not that elaborate, but like I said, there's only twenty points to allocate in the web, and so each I would say branch um, has anywhere between. I don't know, like some have four, some have five, um, like different points that customizes that ability you selected further and further and further. And sometimes every node is completely different in how it improves the ability. And again, you don't have to select all of them. You can just select one or just two, but you have the options of how you want to customize that ability. And again, People may, may be saying, oh, it's apples to oranges, right? You're comparing an ARPG to an MMORPG. But I, I feel like this is kind of like the issue um, that I have as a WoW player uh, when I you have to basically allocate points to actually get an ability. You know where I come from, right? You just level to level 7 or level to 10, and then, you, oh, you're level 10? Here's a new ability. It just automatically goes to you. But the way Ashes is doing it is that you get talent points, and each point you have to allocate to earn a new ability to put on your bar. Mm-hmm. And so, and when you do that, each, uh, like I've looked at the, the hunter talent tree or the fighter talent tree, when you select an ability like MAME, Sometimes there is no way to customize it. And if there is a way to customize an ability, there's only two options. I, I just don't, for someone like myself that really loves customization, I am only customizing my bar in the sense of abilities and some of the abilities in two choices. Like, I okay, just think well, that's basic. Look at it. Look at it from a different point of view. Okay. If you are. Um, and we'll just go with level 15 because that's that's what we were and that's how many points we had to spend, right? Right. So there were, uh, if, if you counted them up, there was probably 30 points that could have been spent on this tree that was available at level 15. Right. We had 14 points to spend. Now, of those, you start off with a couple basic skills that your class has. I oh, think so- there were two. There were okay, two so- skills. Okay. Two. There was your basic, there was a, 
well, three if you count your basic attack. There's your basic attack, and then Tank had two different skills that, that were available for just free use. Okay. After that, you had zero skills. So every one of your points, your 14 points on the customization level, you can either choose a new skill or potentially adjust how one skill functions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are your those are your two you two variants. So you can either build wide or deep as far as your skills go. You could go and choose um, all of your stuff, uh, or for I'm speaking from a tank specifically because I didn't really play around with any of the, the other classes, but I had um, three skills in a row, like right next to each other, where I could choose AOE or single target. So that right there, for a tank point of view, that's telling me: Am I trying to pick up trash? Or am I trying to take a boss? And in PvP, am I trying to go after? like target healer specifically, or am I just trying to be a menace to everybody? But those 14 points, I can either choose to get 14 different skills, 14 completely different skills, or I can probably pick 10 and modify others with a little bit of a boost. Like the, the protect skill, the one where you take a little bit of damage from one person, that little beam that, you, that uh, Maggie was talking about during the caravan stuff, when she said that was a, that was a protect thing. That last uh, that reaches like ten yards or ten feet. Right. If you add an extra point, it goes up to like twenty or thirty. Right. So you can make it deeper or wider, depending on. Um, to me, that's that's a great amount of customization because if you don't choose one, you don't get that skill at all. Well, <clears throat> the other thing I want to add in is, um, at that same time, there's probably going to be secondary augments to choose from that might add further customizations to the base skills that we don't see because again when they're showing us things like the archer or ranger arc, uh, skill tree and the fighter skill tree those are base archetype skill trees mm -hmm. we have no idea what it's going to look like when we get a secondary on there there um, could be potential for a lot more augments to those skills right i when people talk about the augments like i went to go look at uh what um what arc age did when it comes to how they augment and it's because there's four schools in ashes of creation there's going to be potentially four augments that you choose from so you know once you get your once, once you get to 25 you have four options of how you want to customize that one ability and to me that seems better uh in the sense of again i'm only going off of like what i'm seeing from this one talent tree and I think once we can add that context of the augment system, I may completely agree with you, Vertec, but at a base level, I, I I do think that you do have the customization of going wide as far as like selecting 14 abilities or selecting eight abilities. But when you say deep, I just don't think two options is deep. That to me is shallow as hell. And, and I would just prefer more options. But if you can add those two single target AOE plus four other augments choices on that same ability i might be very different right but i think it then comes down to how much is this augment system going to heavy lift customization because from what steven talks about it seems like it's going to be very flavorful and not meaningful and that's another mm -hmm. scary thing to me because then it's not going to feel like like oh it's it's a blue spell now that basically does the same thing when it used to be a, a yellow spell or something like that, right? Like, because now I'm a bard or I'm a mage or, you know, whatever the secondary type is. And I think that's what's always been kind of uh, afraid for me. Oh, my God. Dude, Nison, is there no one else? What's going on, dude? Thank you so much for the raid. Yeah, Holy honey. Jesus. Hello, raiders. Why am I not getting notifications? In. Like, what is going on here? I literally I just saw them. Jesus, dude! Welcome, welcome, guys. I hope you all had a great conversation. My boy Richie shh, in the house. Oh my God, <laughs> what is going on, dude? Um, <laughs> and Richie, <laughs> Richie's H. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, there's the notification. All late. Jesus. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no. I again, Vertec. Like you have to understand, I am so passionate about customizing classes because to me, that is like an entire gameplay loop for me. Like being able mm -hmm. to really customize and correct me if I'm wrong, but those 14 points that you mentioned. So you have basically two starters, starter skills, but then those 14 points, don't you allocate that to potentially four branches because you have your character talent tree, your weapon talent tree, the universal talent tree and the augment tree. Like, isn't that how it works? We or had, am I, 
we had during that testing we had two talent trees one of them was only a couple people had for a certain weapons mm-hmm. on their thing and that was the like i had a short bow as my range weapon but the mace that i was using didn't have a skill tree built for it at least in the mm-hmm. in the game in that version of it right. the the bow had its own points it would level up separately from me yeah i'm sorry i'm giving oh. all these weird looks because as a cleric all i had was the cleric skill tree so i was like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I didn't there, there experience were... any of that. <laughs> yeah, there, so yeah, here you go. There, there were three tabs when you open the skill tree. There were three tabs that I okay. saw. There was um, tank skill tree. There was weapon skill tree, and then there was uh, the skill book, which is just it shows the icon and the description of the skill, just like a spell book. It just so you can see the icon and drag and drop it on your bar. Um, but when uh. When you leveled up to 15, you got all the all 14 of those skill points to use in your archetype skill mm-hmm. tree. The weapon would level up as you gain experience and do stuff with it. It would gain levels and it would have its own separate points to assign. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so the way your level, I guess the 14 levels they just gave you, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Those are your leveling points. And those leveling mm-hmm. points are allocated to your character, your character talent tree, and the universal talent tree, right? Because they mentioned, I know that wasn't implemented in the in the Node Wars, but they've mentioned that they're actually going to have uh, a universal talent tree that can maybe improve your dodge, improve, uh, what was it, what do they say, like tank stuff, like your shield uh, stuff, like other things like that. So is that the way it's going to work, right? Like for those point allocations? You know, I'll be honest, I'm not certain. Let me take a look. I guess. Take a look. Pick this up. Okay. Wiki, yeah. wiki, here I come. Because Gee. I'm not certain how the universal no, I know. thing is supposed to work. Yeah, yeah. No idea. No, I know. And again, I only mentioned that because I'd assume since it's going to be a separate thing that um, there's going to be a choice involved with that point, right? So each time you level, <laughs> you have the choice to either input it into your, your character talent tree, which is for your abilities your uh universal talent tree which is for like improving like your utility skills or your augment talent tree so there's three choices in the matter like eventually once we get into ashes right like we're past level 25 one point gets allocated to like potentially three different areas so you can choose to go all in on your weapon and have really advanced basic attacks or you can go all in on having more abilities on your bar. But hey, if you're only comfortable having your eight abilities and you don't need any more, then you can just customize the hell out of your weapon, customize the hell out of those abilities, augment the hell out of them, and that's it. Because you don't care for the other, other abilities. Um, yeah. I, I think that's yeah. kind of like what I'm alluding to is the fact, I do like that aspect of it. I like the fact that you're not just gonna be able to earn, like my, my fear was initially that you're gonna have 50, 50 points um, that you earned for your talent sheet your your character sheet your augment sheet you know like and it was just going to be like there's really no choice in the matter you're just going to get 50 points for each of these sheets regardless but if there's actually going to be true choice in the matter that makes it more compelling yeah and see yeah i just found that here so skill points can be used to unlock universal skills at the expense of unlocking class specific skills there you go so yeah yeah you're right there so they, they weren't in the the node wars test but I mean, I think that's interesting because you could, uh, some examples they put in here were like dodging, active blocking, mana, stamina. Mm -hmm. So you could actually totally dial into being, say, a mage that's focused on specific skills and just has a ton of mana and mana regen. Right. Mm -hmm. And they just, they're all about that, that stealthy casting and blowing people up and never having to stop blowing people up. Yeah. And it's like I said, there's a lot of aspects where I, I do love the direction of the choice in the matter of customization. I guess like without my mind just gets very fearful because we haven't seen the augment system at this point and the things that we are seeing, like I am just not digging in the sense of presentation, but also in the sense of customization. And again, like I, I hope I am with you, Vertec. I hope when I get in the alpha two, like I'm like, man, Vertec, I was so wrong. Like even without the augment system, I do feel that sense of customization and it feels really good. I just look at it and I know and I know myself. I know how I am. Like I just look at it. I'm like I, I don't know. I'm feeling like I'm gonna be disappointed. You know? Yeah. Let me put it to you this way. I'm I'm also a big fan of having choice. Like uh, in World of Warcraft, I'm not sure if you have you even played. Have you played World of Warcraft? No, never in my okay, life. Okay. I thought I thought I thought you were I thought you were the one that 
that said you'd never had. So there was there was a your typical like skill tree that you're thinking of with with most games where you had to choose like one of these three to in order right. to unlock the next tier, and then you have to choose up to five for the third tier to unlock, etc. Right. Right. And it was like that for the longest time, and you had some decent choices. There was always an uh, an optimal one, but then at one point they just said, you know what? Forget about all that. Throw it out. You get these skills. It's what you get. And every 10 levels, you get to choose one of these three things. And that's it. That's what you get. You choose one of these three. And the next 10 levels, you get to choose three more, one of these three. And it absolutely frustrated me. But um, so I've, I've always since then looked at skill trees as I need to make sure I have meaningful options. I need to know that it's going to, it's going to make me choose between things that I really want to have. Right. And when I saw the tank tree at first, when I first stepped into the Node Wars test, I was looking at it going, well, this seems confusing for one, but for two, like, eh, it doesn't feel like I have a lot of choice in this and that. But then once I built out all my points, I started staring at everything uh, during, you know, setup time and all that. And I'm looking at all these options, like, I really want to get that over there, but I got to, I got to remove like four of these points to get to it. Right. What am I going to remove? These all seem pretty vital um no okay so i just can't get that okay so let me uh okay well and then the next test i said no i have to because the thing that i had to get was the wall and the first test i was like i just can't get to the wall i don't have enough points for it and i i like this stuff better but uh, after seeing how useful the wall was i said yeah i have to get the wall for this for this event i have to get the wall pretty much so i had to kind of rethink and re-strategize how i wanted everything to work and function and synergize in order to make sure i got the wall and then Not- there's a whole other side of the tree that just wouldn't play well in that event. But if I was doing something else, I would have to take those. Yeah. Like they're, and it would be absolutely essential for a PVE encounter. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of those really hard press choices that that's why it's group composition is so vitally important because maybe for you as a tank, you're like, I'm not the tank with the wall. The other tank has the wall because I have this ability that the other tank doesn't have. And I think that's the true beauty of customizing around a group right is the fact that you can have your own toys in the tank or you know your other you know um cohorts have their own separate toys and it feels like very meaningful because you know you have stuff that people rely on and vice versa and i think that's what a lot of mmos lack nowadays because i think there's just so much cookie cutter that ends up happening in character customization. And believe me, like, I hate it. I super freaking hate it. Like, I, I want there to be like, yes, this is the good, the best template, you know, for a fighter or for a ranger. But for my group comp, it's completely wrong because of how we allocate our points or how we all run together. I know my friend has this ability. He customized it this way. I customize this ability to go this way. And so even though you may watch a YouTube video where this is the best, quote unquote, the best stuff to have, that that video may be completely wrong for you. And that's the thing that I actually like about Ashes in the sense if you're actually truly knowing the group comp you're going with. Uh, I just hope that the reallocation of talent points um, is easy. I, I, um, I really want there to be things where you can go to your node and just be like, hey, I, I want to shift my talent points and do this. Um, yeah. I, I don't want that to be hard or very expensive or... Because I, I want people to customize. I think customization and and actually experimenting is vastly important. Um, I understand if you want there to be um, that hard pressed decision on your second augment, and that, that takes you a long time. But I don't think it should take you uh, to hoops and back to re spec yourself as far as your talent points to try different uh, parts of your your weapon tree, try different parts of your character sheet tree, or you know stuff like that. Like it's just a truly experiment and just see what it's all about right and then of course once you go into the world like once you're not in a rested area you're kind of solidified in those decisions but if you go back to the node and you're in a rest area i think you should be able to just to freely uh change your talents how do you how do you guys feel about that about talent uh, switching and do you think it should be more permanent that there should be more meaningful decision there or do you think you should be able just to change them uh like at a rested area I talked for a really long time. Would you like to take this one, TV? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine, for tech. Um, This is not really like my area of, of excitedness. Um, so I don't have too much of an opinion on these things. But I mean, I was okay with the way WoW did it. Did it get exhausting after a while? Yeah. Um, I mean, if I had to have a design for how you would be able to redo a 
skill tree, it would not be the way WoW did it. Because let me tell you, that infuriated me every time. If I wanted to change one skill on my entire tree, how to restart all over. Take a screenshot, what it looks like first, so I know what I had and what I wanted to change, and then rebuild the whole thing over. I wish I could just unclick the one the one thing I want and the other thing that I do want. Like right. I, I wish I wish that that was the case, but I, I don't really have a preference for really anything else. I mean, I, I'm pretty open to seeing how they intend to do it before I have any thoughts on it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Vertec, do you have anything to say before on that um, subject? I think, and, and so this is, uh, I think for some people, a very, uh, I guess some people are very opinionated about it, that it should be very difficult and you should, you should make decisions and they should be, they should be important and they should stick there and, and you should pay a whole lot of money or have to do a quest or something. But I think skill trees just to reset and respec, I don't think you should have to to pay or do anything like you send me on a 10 hour quest to earn the, the ability to do it, but just send me back to town to respec. Right. If need be. Um, and even, I mean, to take it a step further, I think being able to change your secondary archetype should be the same kind of deal. Like you should have a long quest to, to unlock every secondary archetype. Each, each individual one, you have to do a long quest line or a long this or that, you know, pay a bunch of money, go collect some materials and give it to your, you know, the dojo or whatever that's going to train you in that. Right. And take some, take some training that's specific to that secondary archetype. Um, learn how to be a cleric, even if your your primary archetype is a mage, that type of thing. Right. But then I should yeah. just have to go back to town to, you know, relearn one of the other archetypes I've already unlocked. Okay. Well, I mean, we're already past an hour. So is there anything you guys would want to talk about before we end the episode and go into the post show? Mm, mm, mm. I thought this oh, was a no. pretty awesome conversation so far. <laughs> I mean... I was going to say, we've already covered a whole lot of stuff. I yeah. know. I know. And again, once you catch me on character customization, I can go all day. So I'm Captain America <laughs> right. in that regard because <laughs> I, I just, I'm so passionate about it. But um, guys, uh, thank you all so much for coming on and, and hanging out with, uh, with poor little old me uh, on, on my show again. I really appreciate you guys finding the time to come out and just hang out. Poor little old you acting like you're not a superstar yourself. <laughs> Jeez. Right. What are you talking about? <laughs> the people love you. They're out here screaming for you to take your hat off so they can see your, your luxurious curly hairs. Oh my God. No, it looks like a yeah. mess right now. <laughs> That's why I have that on. I've been home all day. I've just been chilling, just relaxing and stuff like that, trying to catch up on my Z's and uh, but honestly, like today was such a great stream day. I was so blown away with the the live stream and everything like that. Um yeah, I, this was just, a, it was really good, like for me. And I'm sure it was awesome for you guys as well. Um, yeah. But guys, if you guys aren't following the Golden Feather Tavern, how dare you go do that now? Um, and of course, where can people find you guys? TGF Tavern everywhere. All right. Chibi, did you want to add anything else? Because uh, you you do a lot more than I do when it comes to the public facing <laughs> stuff. This is, if ever you see a message from TGF Tavern out and about, it's probably... It's probably that lovely face behind. It's the that one over. Oh, this one. No, the one next to this one. <laughs> the one, the one yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way over that way. Yeah, all the way over that way. <laughs> um, I, yeah. So I guess I'm kind of more of the face of the Golden Feather because I'm everywhere. <laughs> but um, I mean, Vertec Vertec works a lot, so he tries he tries to be everywhere too. But um, yeah, we're TGF so, Tavern across all of our socials. What? Sorry. I was just going to say, if there's a tech issue, I'm the one that fixes it. But yeah. if there's a social yeah. thing going on, it's probably her. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, thank you all so much. Um, guys, if you guys like this episode, hit the like button on YouTube. It helps out pump this uh, into the algorithm. Uh, subscribe, of course, for more uh, 1v1 content to always keep up with my stuff. If you're watching on Twitch, of course, hit that follow button. It always keeps you updated anytime I go live on Twitch. Uh, I am Vladis Gaming. Uh, that is Chibri and Vertec with a golden feather. And we will see you guys on the next one. Later, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.